What is the connection between small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and the pancreas? And the big question is, does every patient with SIBO need strong digestive enzymes? Is there kind of a lack of digestive enzymes in this condition? Does the poor production of enzymes from the pancreas lead to SIBO and bacterial overgrowth, or is it both? Now, there is a curious pattern that I see in some of my SIBO patients where we do some stool testing. I love the complete microbiome mapping here in Australia, but a bunch of functional labs are gonna look for this. It's kind of a must in terms of a stool test. If your stool test has looked for a marker called elastase one, that is showing you how much enzymes is the pancreas producing and liberating and kind of sending to the small bowel to assist in digestion. So a doctor, mainly a gastroenterologist, would use this lab test, the last day is one, to kind of rule in or rule out a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. And basically, big long fancy name saying that the pancreas is not producing and sending those digestive enzymes to the small bowel. And I see this all the time. I can't tell you how many times I've seen it. I'm kind of collecting these cases where patients will come to me with this lab testing and either their you know, previous naturopath or herbalist or functional doctor, holistic doctor, gastroenterologist has ordered this and the number is below 200 micrograms of elastase one, you know, kind of pushing us towards that condition and that diagnosis. Again, that's the doctor's job. They diagnose conditions, it's not my job. It's, it's been ignored or it hasn't been discussed, it hasn't been talked about, and it's certainly, they haven't gone down digestive enzyme supplementation, which is the recommendation that's made for this condition, EPI. Why is this important? You know, so far it's a lot of kind of technical talk, but exocrine pancreatic insufficiency can kind of mimic or contribute to a, a worsening of symptoms in SIBO. And you know, the non-specific symptoms could be bloating, discomfort, you know, steatorrhea, meaning a lot of fat in the stool, diarrhea, excess flatulence, and weight loss. I mean, that's sounding a heck of a lot like a SIBO patient to me. And that's why I think it's really valuable when we're working someone up to know, is it SIBO? Is it EPI? And the big mama here is both can be existing. And I have seen that in a number of patients where we have to treat both of these conditions at the same time to get someone over the finish line. Now, if you dig into the literature, which I love to do in my spare time, we can see that elastase one and exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, they're kind of associated with really serious conditions, you know, damage to the pancreas, that organ that produces all those digestive enzymes, you know, things like um, pancreatic Titus, things like cystic fibrosis, but even conditions that damage the gut lining are associated with lower exocrine pancreatic production. Things like IBD and celiac disease have been really well studied here. When a patient comes to me, or when we talk about it, or when we test them and we find low elastase one, you know, below that 200 mark cutoff. I refer them back to their prescribing doctor. I think that's really important that it kind of gets on the books and that a doctor reviews it. And you know, when they're in that process, they get a bit freaked out because a lot of them are using Dr. Google to you know, ask what's going on with my kind of pancreas and why isn't it producing these enzymes? You know, even things like pancreatic cancer can be a cause of low enzyme production from the pancreas. And you know, again, that's why we send them back to the doctor. But I can tell you, again, there are serious conditions associated with it. We don't want to ignore that. We don't want to rule it out without a doctor having a look. But I have seen dozens and dozens of cases of low um, elastase one and you know, kind of EPI diagnosed by the doctor. And I've never seen physical damage to the pancreas as a driver, the pancreatitis, or the pancreatic cancer, and the cystic fibrosis. I've never seen those conditions, so I'm, I'm seeing a lot more of the functional side of things rather than the kind of organic disease and damage to the, to the organ. So on the functional side of things, 
you know, the question is why is the pancreas struggling so much and why is it so darn common in a SIBO presentation and what leads to what? Does the low enzyme production lead to SIBO? Does the SIBO lead to low enzyme production? And how do we intervene? That's the most important part. How do we get you better? And I think, you know, from where I sit and from the research that I've done and the patients that I've seen, the clinical experience, I think it goes both ways. So if we're looking at the pancreas causing SIBO, right? So EPI or low pancreatic enzyme production leading to a bacterial overgrowth in the small bowel, we can see that pancreatic enzymes are antimicrobial and the pancreatic fluid is antimicrobial as well. And we have one study, so excited when I found this one. It is in dogs, so we have to take that with a grain of salt, but I think it's really compelling research showing that these dogs with EPI, again, low pancreatic enzyme production, led to uh, a SIBO picture, overgrowth of bacteria in the small bowel, and most exciting, exciting piece of the study, when they supplemented these dogs with exogenous pancreatic enzymes, right? They just gave them pancreatic enzymes, which again is the treatment for EPI. It reversed or treated or resolved that SIBO picture in those dogs. So we just talked about how the pancreas through low digestive enzyme liberation can cause SIBO. And now let's talk about how SIBO can actually lead to low enzyme production from the pancreas. Now remember that most cases of EPI are through damage to the actual pancreas. I've never seen that and I've seen tons of EPI cases, lots and lots of low elastase, even functionally low if it's not EPI. Just the pancreas is struggling a little bit to produce the enzymes and we can see that in cases where gut damage is kind of common, you know, conditions like celiac disease, small bowel gut damage is synonymous with celiac disease, and also in inflammatory bowel disease, we can see a strong link to exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. So here, the real kind of mediating factor is a loss of brush border enzymes and what we're reading in the literature, it's not so clear, but it's clear enough for me in clinical practice, is that damage to the gut lining in the small bowel can lead to low enzyme production from the pancreas. So here we can see testing coming in handy, and I frequently see a SIBO case associated with gut damage on stool testing, whether that's high zonulin, or even if we've done a urine test, a lactulose mannitol test to test for leaky gut, we see these two presentations commonly associated with each other, and we have great data showing that SIBO can lead to leaky gut strong driver of leaky gut. And again, I see a big, big, big correlation between gut damage and low elastase one. Remember, elastase one is the marker for how much your pancreas is producing those digestive enzymes. If it's below 200, that is a referral back to the GP, get worked up for EPI, particularly if you're presenting with the other symptoms, bloating, abdominal pain, you know, fat in the stools, flatulence, um, you know, the list goes on. Again, that looks a lot like SIBO, so if SIBO's at play, we gotta treat that as well. So what do we do in these cases? You know, if you've got SIBO and breath testing positive, and if you've got elastase one low, showing that you've got low production of digestive enzymes from the pancreas, what do you do? Number one, I would be supplementing strongly with digestive enzymes. And if it was a significant case, I'd be referring my patient back to the GP to get worked up and maybe if the GP signs off on it, get a script for digestive enzymes, script-based, because they are a lot stronger and they are a lot more affordable than what we can provide. We also wanna be treating the SIBO head-on at the same time, 
herbs, prebiotics, probiotics. There's a whole kind of litany of things that we can use there. And then the last piece, and this is kind of after all that's kind of resolved and the patient's feeling better, we want to be working on healing and sealing that gut lining. That's so, so important because that will knock on to better production and liberation of enzymes from the pancreas. So I hope that helped. If I missed anything or if you have any experience, leave it in the comments below. There'll be a few links in the comments below as well to uh, products that I use. And uh, you know, if you're in Australia or New Zealand and you are dealing with digestive health issues, then consider working with us here at Byron Herbalist.